Hey guys, so now we are going today we are going to continue our May June 10 PP 225090 O level biology from question number four. So let's see what question number four says. It says the human double circulation has both a circular a circulation taking blood to and from body tissues and a circulation taking blood to and from tissues of the lungs. The graph shows a change in mean blood pressure and the blood vessels as blood passes to and from the body tissues. Name the circulation shown in the graph. The first artery, the blood enters with the highest mean blood pressure. So we know the first artery as a blood actually. So these are the four chambers of the heart we can say. So this is, uh, these are the bottom ones are the ventricles and the top one are the atrias. So we know this is our right atrium this is our left atrium this is our right ventricle this is sorry our left ventricle so the blood actually leaves the heart through the largest artery which is actually the aorta or aorta whatever you say so the first artery that the blood enters with the highest mean blood pressure this is obviously the aorta so aorta is the largest artery and the first artery and aorta actually supplies blood to all the parts of the body so the blood pressure has to be high very high and of course in artery always have a higher blood pressure than the veins because they have a very thin or very tiny lumen as compared to the lumen of the vein so yeah so that's another reason then says the last vein that blood enters with the lowest mean blood pressure so one of the main thing we need to notice is it says the last vein so last vein the blood enters so over here we can see so these are the veins so the last vein the blood enters is actually our vena cava okay our blood returns back to the heart enters the right atria through the help of the vena cava the two vena covers there is the inferior vena cover and the superior vena cover superior brings from the top part of the body and inferior from the bottom and the rest of the body okay okay next let's see question b so question b says explain explain using your knowledge of the structures of arteries and veins the change in the mean blood pressure shown in the graph okay now if we observe the graph let's get rid of everything else so now if we take a closer look to the graph you see this is the shape of the graph as you can see so it says using your knowledge about the structure of arteries and veins the change in mean pressure so of course as i've already mentioned the arteries actually oh my gosh okay sorry the arteries actually have a very large loom a very small lumen so artery have a very small lumen or we can say the diameter of the lumen is actually very small very small lumen or very small very small or very less diameter of the lumen on the other hand vein has a very wide lumen okay as a result the artery since it has a very small lumen so the pressure is high because we if we know about physics pressure is inversely proportional to area since the cross section area of the lumen is very small so the pressure is actually more as the area is small so on the other hand vein has a wide lumen so as a result the pressure is actually less in the veins okay so we can just say that the pressure is less in the veins because it has a very wide lumen okay another thing is that the veins also has a very thin muscular walls as compared to the arteries the arteries on the other hand have a very thick layer of muscular walls so this very thick layer of muscular walls actually also allows blood to actually pass the artery at high pressure so this the artery does not break down on the other hand they have veins on the other hand a very thin muscular layer as a result blood need to travel at a lower pressure to these thin muscular walls to prevent any kind of damage to these walls okay so we can also mention about the um about these uh about these muscular walls so vein have a very thin muscular wall whereas artery have a very thick muscular walls to uh, do to actually undergoes as it undergoes huge amount of blood pressure okay and we can just describe the trend that is it increases like it is highest in the arteries then it decreases as it goes towards the vein in the capillaries the blood pressure is 
medium so another thing another important information is that in artery the blood actually travels in pulses as it leaves the heart and once it enters the capillaries the pressure reduces slightly as you can see over here in this graph and the pulse speed also starts to decrease and in vain the blood has no pulse speed okay so that's another additional information sometimes we actually need that information in certain questions so in this question in part b we can just mention about the lumen and the uh, art and about the walls or the diameter of the walls and the trend describe the trend in the graph that artery has higher pressure and vein has a lower pressure so just saying that or the pressure reduces from arteries to veins to capillaries uh, will score as the three marks those are the three marking points okay so let's see question number c so c says describe with reference to movement of named substances the process that takes place as blood passes through the capillaries of the body tissues okay so one thing we need to understand is that the body tissues actually require oxygen to carry out respiration and we know the red blood cells actually carry in the hemoglobin of the red blood cell they actually carry oxygen which actually goes to the nearby body tissues where they use for respiration aerobic respiration okay and in return they actually return back carbon dioxide so they actually transport useful products to the cells and takes away the uh, the less useful products or the products which are no longer used by the cells okay so you have a capillary network like this in between our cells or body tissues so we can say these to be our body tissues i know my drawing is very bad and um, this can be the capillary network they're spread out to increase the surface area to volume ratio but in this question we mainly have to mention that through the process of diffusion useful substances such as oxygen and we can also mention glucose oxygen and glucose actually leave the capillary by the process of diffusion and enter the surrounding body tissues or cells where they used up for the process of respiration to release energy on the other hand respiration actually gives out carbon dioxide so this carbon dioxide enters from the body cells to uh, from the body tissues or from the body cells back into the capillaries by the process of diffusion okay you can also mention about other waste products so this entire this is actually the plasma okay whatever so yeah so we can just mention about this so to get these three points uh, in this question we can just mention that um by the process of diffusion useful substances such as oxygen and glucose which are required by the body tissues or cells get out of the capillaries and enter the cells and uh, substances such as carbon dioxide which is released during respiration which is no longer required by the cell is actually gets into the capillaries okay so that's going to score us the full three marks here okay okay let's see the next question it says draw on the graph on page 8 a line to show the change in mean blood pressure at blood passes to and from the tissues of the lungs okay so it says draw a graph uh, okay let's go to page eight which is basically our last page so let's clear out this graph and actually draw this line what they've said so they're saying that we have to draw a line to show the change in mean blood pressure and blood passes from the tissues of the lungs okay now one thing okay yeah so uh, so over here it just mentions about the lungs since it is a lungs so we know in the lungs we carry out uh, sorry lungs means pulmonary circulation so in lungs we use pulmonary circulation so one thing we know about this pulmonary circulation i think is this is actually a low pressure circulation whereas in the body the whole circulation to the whole body is called the systemic circulation which oh my gosh circulation which is actually a very high pressure circulation so as a result 
systemic circulation will obviously be high pressure circulation and pulmonary circulation is a lower pressure circulation so since pulmonary circulation to the lungs is a low pressure circulation so the line we need to be careful shall always be below the systemic line this is the line okay uh, this messes things up so this line which they have drawn is a line for the systemic circulation now we need to draw a line for the pulmonary circulation which shall obviously be below the systemic circulation because it is a lower pressure circulation so we can draw anywhere a bit lower pressure the thing we need to keep in mind is that it shall be lower pressure circulation so we always have to give this line below but we cannot just touch the x-axis because uh, that means there is no pressure so yeah so just drawing this thing this blue one actually is representing the pulmonary circulation which we can see is always at a lower pressure than the systemic circulation okay so just drawing this uh, line uh, which uh, line we can actually show the pulmonary circulation okay since it says so we can just give uh, D over here this line is drawn for part D okay now let's go to our next question which is question number five okay so here we can see the lung I think okay so the diagram shows a human breathing system okay okay then it says a photo micrograms below shows further details about two components labeled x and y from the breathing systems of non-smoker using a light microscope okay so here it's magnification of x magnification of y so this is the x and this is the y these are like the trachea the cartilages of the trachea and y is the alveoli so this is actually our alveoli and here we can actually see the cilia actually these uh, these wave like these stringy structures are like the cilia and here we have the goblet cells okay we're going to come here so it says name the structures labeled a so oh yeah so yeah <laughs> that's literally the first question so a actually points to the cilia so we need to mention that it is a cilia which is extensions and projections you can say in the linings of the trachea to remove dust particles oh that's what they say in the second question which is to describe the role of the structures a so it actually allows movement of uh, mucus containing pathogens or dust particles up the lungs okay so it's just two marks so we can just say so it beats in waves to push uh, mucus containing different types of dust microorganisms or pathogens from the lungs toward the throat okay just mentioning this much will score you the full mark okay uh, next uh, if you want to know about the details of this thing what this thing does once it goes to the throat you can either get it out of your mouth or we it actually goes to the stomach where uh, the hydrochloric acid actually digests them and kills those bacteria and all those pathogens but we do not have to go to the details because it's just two marks so just mentioning bits in wave to move mucus containing dust or pathogens up the throat will score you the full marks obviously okay so name the structure labeled b so i think we already labeled uh b yep so b are pointing there so these are actually the alveolar sacs or alveoli so we can just write alveoli alveoli or we can also call them air sacs whichever one you prefer okay next it says uh, part two describe the changes to the structure labeled p would be caused by tobacco smoke and explain the possible effects of the smoker of these changes so we know that uh, tobacco smoking can actually lead to emphysema so what does emphysema actually means emphysema is when uh, the alveoli actually loses their elasticity okay and these alveolar walls actually gets broken down okay so when this alveolar walls gets broken down so this actually loses the elasticity they get broken down and their surface area to volume ratio actually decreases and when the surface area to volume ratio of this alveoli decreases 
there is actually less gaseous exchange and there can be less diffusion as uh, due to less surface area to volume ratio is actually one of the properties which increases the rate of diffusion if there is more surface area to volume ratio there is more diffusion since there is less surface area to volume ratio so the diffusion will slow down which in turn will cause the gaseous exchange system or gaseous exchange mechanism to actually slow down okay so as a result uh, there will be due to less gases exchange there will be less oxygen which will be carried to the body cells also uh, due to less amount of oxygen there will be less aerobic respiration carried out in the muscle cells to release energy so we will get easily we can get tired and there will be breath there can be breathlessness or shortness of breath or we can be it will be difficult to exercise or do physical activities so we can mention all this so what can we write as this answer to this question it's very simple we can just mention that the alveolar sacs actually lose their elasticity and the walls break down so as a result there is less surface area to volume ratio which decreases the rate of diffusion as a result there is less gases exchange and this can lead to uh, uh less oxygen being carried to the body cells or muscles uh therefore less oxygen means less aerobic respiration uh so less energy will be released so it will be difficult to do different types of physical activities also there is a diff difficulty in breathing and this entire thing is called emphysema so we can just mention that and we score the marks score four marks so there are many points you can just mention just four separate points to actually get the four marking points here i just mentioned all the points okay it says outline two reasons why many people regard smoking as socially unacceptable so these are very easy so you can just say uh it has a very bad smell okay and other thing we can just mention the fact about passive smoking so i think we guys know uh, we know about passive smoking so passive smoking uh, means uh, that uh, when someone else actually smokes in front of us it can also affect the observer or the spectator whoever stands uh, in front of them or uh, closer to them so that person can also get affected by the smoke so this passive smoking due to passive smoking bad smell sometimes mark schemes also give uh, as uh as i i difficulty like some problems with the eye in the mic scheme sometimes it's present but the stronger points is usually bad smell and passive smoking okay so these two points just score the two marks okay okay so in the next question question number six in section b it says to mention answer both questions in this section so it says the diagram shows a magnified image of chromosomes of one skin cell of a person. Say two conclusions that can be made about the person using only information and explain each condition conclusions. So it's very easy these questions. This is like one of the easiest questions of this paper, I gotta say. So at first we can easily see that there is an X and Y chromosome and there are three pairs of chromosomes in the 21st pair, which is which means obviously Down's syndrome and presence of y chromosome immediately means that the person is a male okay so what can we mention so at first we can say that the person is a male why we understood because there is both x and y chromosome in the 23rd pair so there are total 23 chromosomes so in the 23rd pair there is both x and male uh, x and y chromosome so that means obviously it's a male and another thing we can say is in the 21st pair there is a trisomy or three chromosomes in the 21st pair or there is a triplet which actually means the person has a down syndrome which means one extra chromosome in the 21st pair okay so total chromosome number is actually 47 instead of 46 okay you can just mention that and that's good okay next question it says name the type of gamete in the human male that's the simplest answer ever that's just sperm we know that and it says outline the process of producing this type of gamete uh, so we know sperm is actually produced in the testes the main process is actually spermatogenesis but we are not required to know the details of it so we can just say that the sperms are actually produced in the testes 
in the test is how are sperms produced sperm produced we know about cell division so any kind of gamete cells are produced by meiosis cell division so meiosis means there will be a haploid number of chromosomes because the chromosomes are actually halved during meiotic division or uh, during meiosis cell division so this means the chromosomes are halved so as a result uh, halved as a result gametes have 23 chromosomes instead of 47 and this is used to restore the number of chromosomes in the next generation but we do not have to go into the details so we can just say sperm they produce in the testes by meiosis cell division where the chromosomes are half to produce haploid number of chromosomes so that's it that's good for this question okay so next question we can see this just reminds me of dispersal of course so okay the diagram shows fruits p q and r each fruit was produced in a different species of plant okay such as with reference to structures with the diagrams how each fruit is dispersed as expected so in p we can see these are spikes and thorns so these can easily get stuck in the feet of animals so feet of animals this fruit can easily get stuck as a result this is simply animal dispersed because it has hooks or thorns or spikes to it which can stick to the legs of animals and they can get uh, detached elsewhere from the plant as a result it's animal dispersed that's it very easy then it just gives another indication that this fruit is red in color so red means this is attractive so attractive means once again animal so animal can eat these these are like fruits so animals can easily eat these structures as they are attracted to them as they are red in color and they may be nutritious so as a result they eat this so we know this in these uh, seeds of the any kind of dispersal during dispersal these seeds cannot be digested by the gut enzymes so as a result uh, as a result they are actually excreted out during defecation we can say or uh, they are removed in the form of feces uh, away from the parent plant somewhere else by the animals because they cannot be digested by the enzymes as a result it's also animal dispersed so here we can easily see there is a helicopter like structure or we can say this is a parachute structure or feathery or this is hairs which increases the surface area so that it increases the buoyancy or the ability to fly so it can be carried farther away by the wind so we can also mention every single point here there are many points to mention so obviously it's wind dispersed so wind dispersed because it has a parachute like structure which increases surface area which increases the buoyancy so it can fly more in the air okay and be carried farther elsewhere from the parent plant that's the explanation okay so easy seven marks it says then next question it says outlines the importance of plant species of fruit dispersal okay fruit dispersal what is the importance firstly it can actually colonize new areas so once it can colonize new areas this will mean that they will actually have more adaptation to that environment okay they can be adapted to different types of environmental conditions also this can reduce the competition closer to the parent plant okay for example if many plants grow in the same place other plants may not be able to grow so if we disperse it farther elsewhere somewhere else this plant can once again grow so this actually reduces the competition for light and everything and they can actually be carried farther away from the parent plant so yep we can just mention that so at first we can say uh, it can it allows for colonization new areas farther away from the parent plant which allows it to develop adaptations to harsh climatic conditions so also this actually helps to prevent competition uh, such as competition for light nutritions in the soil nutritions are required of course so yeah we can also say it actually helps them to prevent this kind of competitions among the plants okay so now let's go to the next question which is section c so answer either question eight or nine it says describe how a plant takes carbon dioxide from the air and mineral ions from the soil so that's very easy so carbon dioxide from the air actually enters through the stomata okay actually it says uh yeah takes carbon dioxide from the air mineral ions so carbon dioxide from the air actually enters through the stomata okay so stomata from the air by the process of diffusion 
Okay, so that's what we can say over here how it gets carbon dioxide from air and about mineral ions from the soil. So mineral ions are taken by the root hair cells in the soil. So root hairs absorb these mineral ions by the process of active transport which actually requires energy okay because it travels against concentration gradient okay so we just have to mention this and passes through the cortex and passes there are two pathway you can actually pass between the cell walls or through the cell membrane so we can just mention that to get the full marks here okay the next question it says how outline how named mineral iron taken by the plant from the soil is made available for the leaves of the plant to produce chlorophyll okay chlorophyll we need to know chlorophyll is actually uh, produced by the help of magnesium ions okay magnesium ions are taken from the soil by the root hair cells so these actually dissolve these actually um, is traveled carried by the xylem vessels this magnesium ions xylem vessel actually carries ions plus water water and mineral ions so these ions need to be in solution with this water so these ions get carried in solution through the help of the xylem vessel to the leaves okay to the leaves uh, in the in the mesophyll cells into the chloroplast where they are used for the synthesis of chlorophyll okay so we know chlorophyll is present in the chloroplast and most of the chloroplasts are located in the mesophyll cells highest amount of chloroplasts are located in the palisade mesophyll so we can just mention about the palisade mesophyll where they are carried and over here over there in the chloroplast in the palisade mesophyll cells this chlorophyll is synthesized okay so we can just mention that and we score the marks okay carried by xylem vessels in solution or in dissolving in water magnesium ions and sometimes nitrate ions may also be used because nitrate is actually used for protein synthesis but mainly magnesium is magnesium will do for all of us we do not have to go into further details so yeah that was for this video so yeah thanks for watching